hitter for this team. Highlighted her in the open, but a 470 batting average with nine doubles, 20 runs driven in. Tarleton State batting 282 as a team. As we settle in for the opener of a doubleheader, over 30,000 fans have come through the doors. The first seven sessions that this beautiful new facility has been open. And first pitch swinging, it's Kelsey Hill. As we said, lefties are batting 116 against Maxwell. You can relate to that, Destiny. <laughs> With a pitcher like Kelly, that lefty-lefty matchup is a tough situation. On the 10th, and she offered at it. Riley Ludlam is doing the catching. Kinsey Hansen a little under the weather. Wish Captain Kinsey the best. I'm sure she is watching. But Riley Ludlam, the start behind the dish. The senior, the transfer from Furman. Lifted on the infield. Second baseman is Alina Torres for the opening game of the doubleheader, and she puts that one away. I like the aggressiveness out of Kelsey Hill just getting in there and being willing to swing. Alina Torres having fun out there after putting that one away. And we see Kayla Wallace, the left fielder for the Texans. Wallace, a senior out of Flower Mound High School. In Texas transferred from Blinn at junior college and then began her career actually at Stephen F. Austin. She can really run leads this team in stolen bases. And batted nearly 350 last season. Maxwell back with a strike. Tarleton State roster or lineup for this game is Pretty old. They've got a lot of seniors, some juniors. That's all we're going to see in this lineup. A few transfers that have been around college softball a bit. Two balls and a strike to Kayla Wallace. Foul tip hung on to. Kelly Maxwell moving the ball really well, keeping it on that outside corner of the plate to the lefties. Pulled toward the Texans dugout. Still getting used to the little nuances of Love's Field. I got the full tour today. I'm jealous. Promise that you will get one. I mean, you're <laughs> way bigger than I am. They, they should come and take you on a guided tour. What was your favorite thing? What was the most oh, interesting? The, the theater room okay. where they can watch video, but the indoor is fantastic as Maxwell induces a swing and a miss from Wallace. Two down. Work in that outside and down corner. It's a tough pitch to hit, but you can't lay off of it. That is the 40th strikeout for Maxwell. She was tied with Nicole May for the team lead in strikeouts. And we see now Katie Schaefer, the third baseman, first pitch swinging off the glove of Brito and down the left field line it goes. And Schaefer is safe at first base. A play that you would say Brito typically will make. Yeah, that was very uncharacteristic of Brito. Just see her kind of kind of dodge that ball. It seemed like she was trying to get her feet set up to make the throw before she actually received the ball. So after not committing an error over the weekend, Sooners commit one in the first inning here. That's the eighth total error. Eight. That's it for this team. And three of those occurred in their loss to Louisiana, which ended the Sooners 71 game winning streak a week ago this past Sunday. So it was a clean weekend here at the ballpark, and we'll see if they can overcome the error. Maxwell deals with Brady Rowland. Brady's sister Keegan is also on this roster. You have the Hill sisters and the Rowland sisters. 
who played for the Texans. And strike two from Maxwell. Twelfth start of the year for Brady Rowland in the designated player position. And has had a good year, 423 hitter. The top four in the lineup, all batting 320 or better for Tarleton State. And some of the competition they have faced, they went to the Longhorn Invitational down in Austin. As Maxwell deals a little bit inside, looks like Garrett Knowles thought about ringing her up. Instead, we'll see a payoff pitch. Did she go around? She did on the appeal down to the third. She'll bat in the number six spot. Alessa Brito and then the reigning Big 12 Player of the Week, Sydney Sanders. Sooners just bashing the baseball over the weekend. The first pitch swinging Coleman to the warning track, and this one is gone. A first pitch leadoff home run. If you weren't in your seats, we're sorry, because Jada Coleman has already left the building. She homered on Sunday against Iowa State, and she starts this twin bill with one that gets just over the first S in Sooners at Love's Field. <laughs> first pitch swinging. Sending it out, Jada Coleman can be put anywhere in this lineup and do damage. But that's a pitch that Alexa Raymeyer needs to be able to keep down in the zone. Can't afford to throw Jada Coleman that first pitch strike. So that's now 11 home runs in the last four games for the Sooners. Going back to the Iowa State series, Oklahoma now 45 home runs as a team this year. That is third best nationally. And Jada Coleman clubs her fourth of the season. Here is Cassidy Pickering leading the Sooners, batting 456. Good off speed pitch there from Remeyer. She's going to need to use that pitch a lot. If she can rely on that and keeping that down in the zone, that may be something that kind of helps them keep the score down. Pickering three home runs. She's driven in 17 runs. Three and one now to the Sooner freshman. And there is ball four. So the first two have reached first base safely. As Cassidy Pickering earns a walk from Alexa Remeyer. She's a junior from Jefferson City, Missouri. Began her collegiate career at Eastern Illinois. And in fact, she was on an Ohio Valley Conference championship team at Eastern Illinois a season ago. Three and two record, two seasons for her at Eastern Illinois. And then transferring down to Stephenville, Texas. Here's Alyssa Brito. Brito off to a torrid start for the Sooners. Top four in the Big 12 in runs, doubles, and home runs. She has hit seven home runs. Two and zero. Oh. Brito takes the strike. It's a good pitch, keeping it down, outside corner. For the Texans to really have a chance at this, they've got to limit the free passes. You've got to keep the ball down. Can't afford many walks. But that takes the count to three and one on Brito with Sidney Sanders. 
red hot bat waiting on deck for the Sooners. Lead off home run in the inning on the first pitch by Jada Coleman. And there is ball four to Brito. Back to back walks to Pickering and Brito in real trouble brewing in the first inning for Tarleton State. This is really one of the most dangerous lineups I've seen Coach Gasso really throw together. <laughs> and that's without Kenzie Hansen in it. Yeah, and I think having Jada Coleman back at the top, she's the party starter. <laughs> that's exactly the way Coach Gasso phrased it today as well. She said, I like seeing different players in the leadoff spot just to see what the lineups look like, but if there's going to be a party, then Jada Coleman's going to be at the party, <laughs> exactly. and she is in the leadoff spot today. Exactly. And then I like seeing Pickering in the two-hole, kind of breaking it up, putting a freshman there. She's done so well as a freshman, but then it's never ending. you got Brito and Sanders right after that, Jennings, Ella Parker. I mean, it is a dangerous lineup. There's no break. Sanders is nine out of her last 14. Four home runs, not just the Big 12 Player of the Week, but the NFCA National Player of the Week. And in the month of March, six home runs and 15 runs driven in. And, and it's only March 12th? <laughs> that sounds right. <laughs> that throw goes into center field, and Pickering is going to score. Brito dives in safely to third. So it will be a wild pitch and then a throwing error, and the Sooners have a 2 0 lead. It's a great block keeping the ball in front by Hill behind the plate. Just a tough decision making that throw across the diamond. Cassidy Pickering scores the second run. And a 2 2 pitch coming to Sanders. Full count. Crowd filled in nicely on a Tuesday. <laughs> Didn't it, though? And they're still coming in. Remember, this is a, a 4 30. Local time first pitch, so it's not even quitting time yet <laughs> on a Tuesday. Imagine what this would look like once people start to get off work and a few more of them work their way out here to the ballpark. But just amazing. Over 4,000 fans have viewed each game. This is in the air to left, but looked like she got under it just a bit. And I think the wind will knock it down as well. Sanders flies out to Wallace. But Alyssa Brito tags and scores the third Sooner run in this opening inning. And it's 3-0 Oklahoma. I do agree. I think that ball was hit high enough for the wind to catch it. I don't know if it would have gone out, but it wouldn't have carried as long as it did. See the flag pushing that wind out to right field. See Rito, who walked earlier, scoring easily. So it is three runs on a hit, two walks, and an error, and the bases are clear with one away for Tiare Jennings. That one just missed. Another excellent start for Tiare Jennings. She's top five in the Big 12 in doubles, home runs, and runs batted in. She hit a three run home run against Iowa State on Sunday. In that series finale. Sooners hit 10 home runs and 10 doubles in a three game series. Oh, and they only allowed three runs as a pitching staff. And they settled into Love's Field nicely last weekend. Pulled foul. And there was that nervousness on opening weekend first games at Love's Field. Patty Gasso said that she said I know I felt it and if I did the players did. But they worked through that. You don't want a winning streak of 71 games to end but it did. And now you don't have to talk about that and it's kind of back to business isn't it a little bit more 
normalcy, I guess you would say, Destiny? Yeah, yeah. I think once you, I mean, just having that in the back of your mind, you're 71 games in and you don't want to lose that last game. I, I feel like going into those that fifth, sixth, and seventh inning of that game against Louisiana, they just started to play a little bit more tight. They're playing not to lose. Ground ball up the middle, ranging over is Troll. And that's out number two as she throws out Tiara Jennings. And Ella Parker will be the best. Ella Parker was six for nine last week. We saw her a week ago tomorrow hit a three run home run against Texas A&M Commerce. She had a three hit game including a home run against Iowa State on Sunday. Ella Parker is a dangerous hitter. She's got extremely quick hands. Time call. Not sure what we're discussing here. I'm assuming, and that's kind of dangerous, it's something to do maybe with the pitch clock. The hitter and catcher must be engaged before it hits 10, and then it's up to the pitcher. So our umpires, Garrett Knowles, Perry Owens, and Chad Spittler talking it over. Like maybe Kalen Hill tried to or wanted to and eventually got timeout called. I can't wait until one day we have microphones <laughs> on the umpires. That sounds like an audio engineer's nightmare to be able to keep track of that. Parker goes around and it's one and two. Both walks have come home to roost. Sooners have a home run from Jada Coleman. Pulled hard off the glove of Jermaine and down the right field line. Parker can scoot. She easily makes second base on what will likely be the first Charlton State error of the afternoon. See her really get her hands inside to work with that inside pitch. Tough play for Jermaine over at first base. It's a hard hit ball. Thank you, That's the second error in the inning. There was a throwing error against the catcher Hill. And here's Riley Boone. Such a versatile player is Riley Boone batting 421 had her first home run of the season against Iowa State back on Sunday. It was a moonshot to right field. Cleared several rows. Out in the bleachers. Three and oh now. Riley Boone has played both corner outfield spots this season. One of the five Sooners batting 400 or better. You think she's batting 421 and she's in the number seven spot. <laughs> it's unbelievable what this lineup looks like. Three and two now. We might trying to work out of a troublesome first inning and allow no further damage to be done. Boom. Backhanded by Jermaine, who touches the bag, inning over. Double dip between the Sooners and the Tarleton State Texans. Kelly Maxwell back out in circle for the Sooners. Recorded two strikeouts in that first inning. 
And the offense already has her a three spot to make her a little more comfortable. Austin Germain, the first baseman, will lead things off for the Texans. It feels like the wind may have picked up a little velocity since this game started. It is blowing out of the south, jet streaming things toward right field. Just one of those March Oklahoma days. Jermaine pulls this one toward Brito, who turns and fires to get the first out. Really great play by Brito, covering that 5-6 hole. Getting her feet set. God, she's got a cannon. Here's the shortstop, Tristan Troll. Junior from Decatur, Texas. Third season at Tarleton State. Batted 305 a season ago, and this year hitting 290. I love that these hitters have come in and they're not afraid to swing. I feel like anything close that Kelly's throwing, they're willing to take a hack. Two balls and two strikes now on Tristan Troll. Kellen Hill will be the third batter of the inning. Tarleton State only its fourth season as a Division I program, playing in the Western Athletic Conference. Texans went to the Jacksonville tournament over the weekend and they had two games rained out. It stinks you travel a long ways and hope that you'll get in four or five games and then Mother Nature intervenes. Maxwell just missed with that one. in left center field but chased down by Jada Coleman two down. It's a really good battle. Shul was fouling some stuff off really smart in the box. So four in a row retired by Maxwell and that brings in Kalen Hill the catcher. Out of Gunter, Texas. Played sparingly a season ago for the Texans, made five starts. A comebacker, Maxwell, records a one, two, three second. Four in a row retired by the Sooner lefty. And a three nothing Oklahoma lead. Nothing lead. Look at that beautiful drone footage. Of Love's Field, gorgeous new home of the three time defending national champions, just settling in in the opener of a doubleheader today. And Riley Ludlam doing the catching, leading things off. Alina Torres will bat next, and then back to the top of the order for Jada Coleman. Two and O. Oh. Walks were an issue for Remeyer in the first. She issued two. They both came in to score. Ludlam lifts this one to left, kind of in on her hands a bit. Circling toward it is Wallace to put it away. 
Looks like a little bit of a struggle out there. Trying to get underneath that ball. It's just the wind. <laughs> I would agree. There have been some interesting looks at fly ball so far today. Like the, the foot chattering. Mm -hmm. Am I under it? Am I under it? Yep. <laughs> Here is Alina Torres, second baseman batting ninth. And there's a base hit ripped through the left side. Torres with a one out single in the Sooner second. You know, we keep pointing it out with with this field. The Sooners do not practice here on a regular basis. They are down at Marina Hines still and then they bust up here for the games. And so they are still learning. Now, of course, they played far more games on this field than anybody else, but everyone's still getting used to it. Here's Jada Coleman. Bunts one. Beautiful, fair ball. She is thrown out on a nice play by Hill, the catcher, though. So how about the versatility of this player? She hit a home run her first time. This time she drops down a bunt, and they're going to review it. Yeah, Jada, have a look at it. She's just unbelievable. She's so good at everything. Just the control of the barrel. It is tough to soften up a soften up a bunt to just hit the dirt and not go anywhere else. Really got to have control over where it hits the the barrel. Got to work with the end of the bat. So that's Perry Owens and Garrett Knowles headed underneath to have a look at this play at first base. We saw Coach Fale Steele over at first base look at Coach Gasso and show the safe sign. Well, Jada Coleman's not going anywhere for now. Perfectly placed. It's a tough call. This will be a good look at it. Oh. That's I mean simultaneous. That's <laughs> Remember though the original call was out by Perry Owens. Do we see indisputable evidence? That's the key. I'm going to say no. I think that's too close to overturn. I think it's a great decision to have it under review, but that's tough to turn over. Meantime, we play the waiting game. Patty Gasso, who became a grandma once again for the fifth time yesterday. Congratulations to associate head coach JT Gasso and his wife, Andrea. And Coach Gasso said, Andrea Ow. is just a champion of uh, women and being a mom. She's a former Sooner assistant herself and a star at UCLA. But congratulations to the Gasso family, welcoming in. Gabrielle Ruth Gasso. So the call is affirmed. Jada Coleman is out number two. Cassidy Pickering will be the batter. You as a new mom can appreciate it, Destiny, how special it is, right? Oh, yeah. It is special. I don't know how Andrea and JT have had four of them. I'm learning how to handle one. <laughs> Cassidy Pickering walked and scored her first time up. They have changed the scoring on the play in the first inning where Ella Parker reached base safely, originally ruled an error against the first baseman Jermaine, but it has been changed to a double for Ella Parker. Ripped foul. You know, you think about this group of seniors for Oklahoma, headlined by Coleman and Tiara Jennings, who have been All Americans every year. And you start to wonder who are those next group of young players that will be 
the T.R.A. Jennings and the Jada Coleman's of the future. And then you watch Pickering and Parker and what they've done this season. We're starting to clue in, aren't yeah, we? Yeah, the future looks bright for this Oklahoma roster. Sydney Sanders, I think she will be the next leader in line. The only junior on the roster this season, but I'm sure we'll tap into the transfer portal. We've seen Maya Bland out there a good deal as well. She got her first collegiate hit. The freshman class. That is caught by the leaping Jordan Nickerson to retire Cassidy Pickering for the final out. I think for the Texans, they've just got to stick to what they're doing. I feel like they did come in with a pretty decent plan. They've been aggressive in the box. Kelly's throwing good pitches, and they're not afraid to get after them. And I think for OU, they've just got to stay focused, do the small things. When you have a team coming out and Tarleton's, you know, the underdog, you tend to loosen up and not stay so focused. So I'd, I'd love to see them really do the small things and get after it. Patty Gasso said she liked the way that her team performed over the weekend, sweeping Iowa State. Another step forward for them. Just kind of maintain that. Continue to get better. Here's Dickerson. She made that leaping grab to close out the bottom of the second. And she went after that one. <laughs> you see her laughing that one off. It's tough. Once you get that pitch, it's right at your eye level. It's tough to lay off of that. This one headed toward the roof and out of play. Jordan Dickerson is a senior from Mount Pleasant, Texas. Began her collegiate career at Northwestern State in Louisiana. Miss 2022 had a medical red shirt that year. And this is her fourth year at Tarleton State. Been a part of those back-to-back 30-win -back seasons for the Texans. Maxwell gets her third strikeout to start the third inning. Really good pitching sequence by Maxwell. She's really mixing in a ton of different locations. See that just kind of fall off the table inside corner. She's doing really well. She's got great command. That is five in a row retired by Maxwell the lone base runner for Tarleton State was on an error in the first inning and here's Ashley LaRue the number nine batter. LaRue has a look at that one it's quickly 0 and 2 LaRue is a transfer from Ole Miss senior from Blanco Texas spent a red shirt injury season down in Oxford with the Rebels in 2021. Maxwell with paint on the outside corner. Back to back strikeouts. And she is really settling into a groove in the third. She is looking really good out there. She's got great control, great placement. These are pitches that you've got to be able to fell off, they're questionable. Kelsey Hill having a look at that one showing bunt and it's a strike anyway. Hill popped up to Sooner second baseman Alina Torres to start this game. Here's the season averages top of the lineup versus the bottom of the lineup for Charlton State. A little pop at the top. Six sixty-six slugging percentage. Hill had seventy hits and batted three sixty-one last year. So she's doing it again for this team. She stands in batting four sixty-four.
popped up. Wind may help hold this one in for Brito, and it does. Inning over. So Maxwell has retired seven straight. First, they hold a 3 0 lead. Bottom half of the third. Coming to you from Love's Field in Norman. And Oklahoma trying to get the offense going again. Sooners have three hits off of Alexa Remeyer today. Alyssa Brito walked and scored her first time. She scored on a sack fly by Sid Sanders, and she lashes this one. Foul up onto the concourse down the left field line. Brito, first team All American last year, 17 home runs, and batted 4 12. Good pitch and the first strikeout of the day for Alexa Remeyer. It's a really good pitch. I like how she was mixing it up throughout the entire at bat, keeping it inside, inside, and then getting her to chase on that outside corner. 25th strikeout of the year for Remeyer. And it brings in Sydney Sanders. She had that sacrifice fly that scored Brito back at the third. How about 16 runs batted in in the month of March for Sidney Sanders? <laughs> Whole conversation what here is. What a stat. Can she go 31 for 31, 31 RBIs in 31 days? Uh, I I think she could, yes. We're not even halfway through the month yet. So three balls and no strikes to Sanders after the strikeout of Brito. Three and one now. Sanders was thinking about tossing the bat away. Yeah, that pitch hadn't been called very much today. And a check swing foul ball runs the count full. In addition to this doubleheader today, just down the street, there's a little bedlam baseball happening between Oklahoma and Oklahoma State. Non conference bedlam action. Sooner baseball team swept UCF over the weekend as the Sooner softball team was sweeping Iowa State here. Remeyer kind of double clutched that, didn't field it cleanly coming out of her glove, but able to get Sidney Sanders for the second out. And that's four in a row retired by Alexa Remeyer now. Remeyer's doing a pretty good job being able to work all sides of the plate, but I've loved her confidence in change-ups or off-speeds just being willing to throw them to hitters like Sanders. If she were to get a hold of that, that would be crazy. But her confidence and willingness to throw that. Done a really good job with it. Now Tiare Jennings. Tiare grounded out to the shortstop troll her first time. Tiare is one double away from second all time. In Oklahoma history in doubles, she's only three away from the top spot, which is held by Sidney Romero. That might be a double. It's into the gap. And just as I say that, T.R.A. Jennings moves into a tie for second <laughs> in Sooner history in doubles. I had no idea, but she did. And she keeps the inning going with that two out double. I think we'll see her at the top of that leaderboard by the end of this season. We're so early. Just approached conference. The way that she sees the ball, there's no doubt in my mind that she'll be the leader of that department. That is her seventh double of the year, the 56th of her career. And here's Ella Parker, who had a double her first time. Sooner's trying to work some 
two out magic here in the third and extend this three nothing lead. After the back to back walks in the first, Remeyer's not been afraid to challenge these hitters, Destiny. Yeah, she's done a really good job. I appreciate her willingness, you know, painting the corners. She seems so confident. She's trusting her stuff. And she's trusting her defense, really. I think the biggest thing for her is keep the ball down, keep the ball in the yard, and let your defense work. That will send the count to two and two on Ella Parker, who's batting 451 now. Remeyer throwing a lot of off speeds. I haven't seen that in any of the home games, at least. Lots of off speeds, just trying to keep these Oklahoma hitters off balance. And then she'll hit you with that pitch right there. Just a little bit inside. Just keeps the hitters guessing. It's what you've got to do when you have a lineup that you're facing like this. And yeah, that time Parker able to hold up. She draws ball four. So there's a little something cooking in the third with two outs. Here's Riley Boone. Riley grounded out to the first baseman Jermaine her first time. Pulls this one to first. Another easy play for Jermaine, and the inning is over. A base hit and two left for the Sooners who lead three that afternoon. This is the first of our two games, and Kelly Maxwell back out there going to work against. Kayla Wallace after opening weekend of Big 12 conference play destiny Oklahoma is the only unbeaten team everybody else lost at least once. It's incredible I think you know with the competition in the Big 12 this season it's going to be a dog fight. That ball called foul so it's 0 2 on Wallace Texas was elevated to number one in the ESPN poll last week after Oklahoma's loss to Louisiana. And then the Longhorns lost one of their three games to Houston last weekend. Now they've lost to LSU again. Strike three call. Maxwell in a groove. Three strikeouts in her last four batters and five on the afternoon. Just caught her looking on that inside corner right at the knees. That's the second time she has struck out Wallace. Katie Schaefer, the only Texans player to reach base safely. She did so on an error back in the first inning. Very uncharacteristic play with Brito over at third base. Just didn't think ball first. One and one to Schaefer. She's out of Sweeney, Texas, and she's one of those who transferred into Tarleton State. She's had a very good career, fourth season with the Texans. Last year, she was second team all Western Athletic Conference, hit 11 home runs. And she is third in program history in both home runs with 33 and runs batted in with 160. Five home runs to lead the Texans this year. Look out, that one hit the underside of the roof and then really ricocheted hard up onto the concourse. That's one we haven't seen. Yeah, we have not seen that come off that way. We're all learning. Yes. We are all learning what this field plays like. That was Even the fans. angle that came down. I bet you couldn't do that if you tried 10,000 more times to get that <laughs> angle. It's 
so interesting how much you realize you have to pick up on as a fan. I think the way that the field is set up now, there's a lot more protection down the lines. There's a, a fence in between the field and the fans all the way down to the end of the fence. What a beautiful shot this is. Bucks field 200 down the left and right field lines. It's 225 to straightaway center. The N in Sooners. That went off the foot of Schaefer and a foul ball. There is turf up the left and right field sides out in front of the dugouts. You know, it's hard to grow. You can see the seam right there, right beyond our first base umpire, Perry Owens. As Maxwell gets a swing and a miss on Schaefer, back to back strikeouts for Maxwell and six on the game now. It's a hard fought battle from both sides. Schaefer really fouling a lot of stuff off. And Kelly just getting her to miss just underneath that ball. A little bit of that upspin. Two down and the base is empty for Brady Rowland, who was a strikeout victim her first time. I like what I'm seeing out of Kelly tonight. Just a lot of confidence in the circle. She's got a little groove going. Bouncing ball. Alina Torres is at second base for the Sooners today. And the inning is over. Maxwell cruising right along for Destiny. Obviously, the loss to Louisiana set him back a week. But with Texas's loss over the weekend, Sooners back up to number one. Yeah, I mean, going that long as number one in the polls, it's unbelievable. Ludlam got under this one. Wallace, plenty of real estate out there to pull in the first out here in the fourth inning. What's the old saying? Uneasy is the head that wears the crown. They're always looking for a reason to demote you. <laughs> and the Sooners continue to emerge. Three-time reigning champions. How aware are you of rankings? So I think you were telling me the other day you were on a team that was struggling in the rankings once upon a time. Yeah, my freshman season, 2011 was the first, was my freshman season. And we thought we were going to come out of the top 25. How did that conversation go with Coach Gasol? Not hot. Not a good conversation. <laughs> but we didn't come out of the top 25, and we made it to the World Series that year. We cleaned it up. But, you know, rankings and, and stats, that's not necessarily a topic of conversation amongst the team until you're about to drop out of the top 25. Exactly. <laughs> they don't matter until they matter. <laughs> but... It's not something that they play tight for. There's nothing that they're, you know, they just go out, they play free. Coach Gasso. Starting up a new one. Four straight one. Deep drive to center field off the bat of Torres, but room for Kelsey Hill out there. Two gone. And give Remeyer a lot of credit. You know, things could really have come unwound for her in that first inning when she gave three runs. But she's held this powerful offense at bay now since. Yeah, she bounced back nicely, giving up that home run to Jada Coleman. That was a missed pitch, and it definitely was something that she learned from. She's capitalized on different opportunities with different hitters. She's trusted a lot of different pitches. Mixing in that off speed is huge for her. Here's Jada Coleman batting for the third time in this one. Very first pitch thrown by Remeyer today. Jada Coleman hit it over the wall in left center field. We have the video. Piped right up the middle, perfectly placed, belt high. It's a pitch that Jada Coleman will always send out of the yard. But she's learned from it, and it shows. And then in her next at bat, she laid down a bunt right in front of home plate and was thrown out at first. The play was reviewed, but was confirmed. The tight call over at first base just looked like a straight up tie between the, the catch and her foot hitting the base. It's too close to overturn, but perfectly placed bunt. Jada Coleman's really able to do so many different things in the box. 
with her slap, with her power, with her control of the barrel, if she's going to bunt. Just got a piece of that one to keep the at bat going. <laughs> a swing like that out of Jada Coleman is a win for Alexa. Just outside the bag on the right field line. Something that will be interesting to watch down the right and left field lines, the way that the wall juts out in foul ground back toward the field. Yeah. It tends to bounce off and go right to the outfield or nearest it as Coleman serves this one into left center field. And it's run down by Hill. It's a one, two, three inning for Remeyer. We're through four. Kelly Maxwell back out to the circle for the Sooners. Tarleton State getting a good pitching performance this afternoon from Alexa Remeyer and staying in it. But Maxwell has not given a hit through four innings. Only base runner on a Sooner error. It has really been a pitcher's duel so far. Kelly Maxwell's done a great job. Alexa Remeyer giving up three runs, but she's been pretty good ever since. Austin Germain grounded out to third base back in the second inning. 0 for 1 today, batting 269. Slow roller foul. Swing and a miss. And Maxwell just continues to motor through this lineup. That's her seventh strikeout. Well, Kelly Maxwell, no hits surrendered so far, Destiny. What do you think of the mix? She has done such a great job with her pitching sequences, just trusting her stuff and really working all sides of the plate. You can see she's working in, out, up. Tough pitches to lay off of. Brito to first, quickly two down in the fifth. Great play by Brito. Just kind of closing in that gap on the 5 6 hole. Keeping her momentum going towards first base, and she just has a cannon. Here is Kalen Hill. Likes to show that arm off, and I don't blame her. I would too. She's got a cannon over at third base. Hill granted back to the pitcher Maxwell the first time up back in the second. <laughs> you see that chuckle out of Kelly. I feel like she's playing really free. I haven't seen her smile on the mound in a while. She's having a good time out there. One hopper to Jennings. One, two, three. Once again for Maxwell. Scored Alyssa Brito, who had also walked. That's where the Sooners have been stuck since that first inning because of Alexa Remeyer. She's retired four in a row since a walk to Ella Parker back in the third. Here's Pickering. She's walked and lined out to the second baseman, Dickerson. Oh, the bounce back from Alexa has been great. That first inning could have shaken her up, but she's handled it really well. It was the walks that were really the problem for her in the first, and she's going three and zero to Pickering here in the fifth.
Just one strikeout for Remar. Sooners have put the ball in play. And there's ball four. That is the fourth walk issued by Remeyer. This is where it could hurt her. Walking that leadoff batter puts you in a tough spot, especially with Brito coming up. Sanders, Jennings, Parker, Boone. A lot of opportunity to start a rally here. Sooners are going to run uh, Hannah Core out onto the field. Sorry, Destiny. No, that's okay. I was just going to elaborate on the, the free passes that the Sooners capitalize on. So there's Hannah Core running for Brito. Or I should say for Pickering, and Brito will be the batter. Brito walked and scored in the first, and then she struck out in the third. Drilled into the gap in left center field. Core is going to charge all the way around to third base. Brito took a huge turn. She was headed to second, but because of the potential of a relay, the first baseman was up the line there at second base. So nobody was back at the back. Brito stays at first. Really great piece of hitting. That's a pitch. She had to go down, grab it from her knees. Really good heads up running by Brito, getting out there and identifying. She's got time to get back to first. I'd love to see Jermaine kind of get back there. Brito's caught in no man's land if there's somebody to defend it. Sanders shows bunt and offered at the pitch, really just trying to get Brito on down to second base, which she does. No throw down. You see that a lot. That's that first and third offensive play practiced a lot to try to draw the throw somewhere to either get that runner safe at second or to score a run. Now you've got nobody out, Sydney Sanders up, two runners in scoring position. And Sanders hammers this one to straightaway right and gone in a hurry. Sydney Sanders with her fifth home run in the last four games. And Oklahoma, just like that, grabs a 6 nothing lead. She is unbelievable. One of the hottest hitters. Seeing the ball so well. That ball is painted on that outside corner. Far off, but the way she lets it get deep in the zone, she keeps her hands inside and just sends the barrel. There's no question on that ball. That Sooner home run presented by OERB, the people of Oklahoma Oil and Natural Gas. Now danger territory for Remeyer, who has pitched very well. The last four innings, a walk, a single, and just like that, this offense is on top of you. Here's Tiari Jennings, who moved into a tie for second place in doubles in Sooner history with her double back in the third inning. So Sidney Sanders with four runs batted in today, 19 in the month of March. Just looking down in the Tarleton State bullpen, I don't see any activity. But there is ball four to Tiari Jennings. See Remeyer working a little bit quicker than she had in the past. That will draw a visit to the circle on the part of pitching coach Stephanie Phillips. Stephanie Phillips has been on the staff at Tarleton State for 10 years. And now we do see a little bit of activity out of the bullpen. 
it is Hannah Blinko who is throwing. Just a brief conversation. Staff continuity certainly important for Tarleton State. Head coach Martin Kupian and Stephanie Phillips have been on the staff together for 10 years. They were assistant coaches together. And Stephanie Phillips moving into the role of pitching coach with Mark Kupian taking over eight seasons ago. They've transitioned to this program to the Division I ranks four seasons ago. Here is Ella Parker. Ella Parker has doubled and walked in this game. And on the move is the Sooner pinch runner, Maya Bland, who came on to run for Tiara Jennings. She swipes second base. It's a great jump. That's exactly what you want to see out of Maya Bland. As a freshman coming in, when you're given an opportunity, you're told what to do, you steal second base, and it's no question. Big hack there. By Ella Parker. They snuck Maya Bland out there while we were watching. We were paying attention to the conversation out in the circle. Hard hit shot past the diving shortstop troll. Bland scores easily as this one bounds all the way to the wall in left center. And it's an RBI double for Ella Parker, her second double of the game. And the Sooners are potentially one run away from a run rule now. You see Bland just identify that ball's going through the hole. I am scoring on that. And Ella, Ella Parker really climbing that leaderboard with the doubles. I mean, that speed that uh, Maya Bland has, who does that remind you of, Destiny? From my years playing, yeah. Brianna Terang. Brianna Terang? She was quick. They had that count clock, the time clock on her home run in the World Series. Well, <laughs> could we say home run? That uh, bunt with the pass ball. Quincy Lilio pinch hitting here for Riley Boone. We saw Quincy Lilio hit a home run back on Sunday against Iowa State, her first of the season. Sooners are in run rule potential with a 7 0 lead and still nobody out. with two doubles in this game. Tiari Jennings has a double. Home runs by Coleman and Sanders. Lilio skies this one into shallow right center field. And it will be the center fielder Hill taking care of the first out in the fifth. Ludlum has hit two fly balls to the left fielder Wallace in this game. Swinging away. Really good pitch by Alexa Remeyer. Just taking some off. This is a hack that we saw out of Riley Ludlam, that first pitch. Trying to keep her off balance. Trying to get Ludlam to chase one there. Two now. Ah! 
big pitch here. Really could be in the grand scheme of things. It is ball four. So from an 0 2 hole to a one out walk for Ludlow. Now having a second baseman. Sooners have drawn three walks here in the inning. Six in the game. Here's Alina Torres, who has a base hit and has flied out to center field. Seven nothing Oklahoma in the fifth. to throw to this lineup. Bring anything in too close to the strike zone. Could be dangerous. But you've got to be able to work the count in your favor. Inside, I've seen many of the Sooner players wearing green ribbons today. It is Mental Health Awareness Day here at Love's Field. Let's see some of them. Got them tucked in underneath the visors, a few of them do. We've got green wristbands as well. Dr. Dolores Christensen, the assistant director for psychological resources. The OU student athletes throughout the first pitch today, in fact. There is a strike to Torres. With that, we've seen some of the OU athletes sharing what they do to help their mental health. Back up the middle. And the Sooners are going to walk off with a run rule win in game one of this doubleheader. It is 8 0 Oklahoma. Are we going to call it? Yeah, that's eight. Took a moment to realize. But an 8 0 final on the RBI single by Alina Torres. That scores Ella Parker. And Oklahoma rolls to 23 and 1 on the season. And that's just how this offense can hit you. All of a sudden, you get five runs in the fifth inning. Good piece of hitting. That pitch was outside. You see Alina getting around that, sending it back over to that left center gap. Giving her team a chance to score. Who'd love them not finishing. <laughs> Trying to finish out that play over at third base. So in addition to the 8-0 win, Kelly Maxwell throws a five-inning no-hitter. The only runner that she allowed was on an error back in the first inning. And Oklahoma's offense with eight more hits, home runs by Jada Coleman and Sidney Sanders, who's homered for the fifth time in the last week. And in the end, it's Alina Torres able to drive in Ella Parker with the eighth and final run in a five-run Sooner fifth inning. And that's how this offense is, though, Destiny. Alexa Remeyer was pitching well. She's feeling confident going into the fourth inning.